Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today we are going to expand a little bit on the last video I did. The last video I did, I showed you how to take a real easy uh, sound card, attach it to a relay. So when one of the pins is, is grounded out, it plays a song and turns the relay on so we can run uh, motors or lights or whatever. That was really well received and I really appreciate all the compliments you guys gave me on doing that video. I appreciate you watching. But one of the questions I kept getting is exactly what it was supposed to do. It's like, how do we wire in the motor or how do we wire in the light? So what I did is I figured, I'm not gonna tell you how I did all this. You can watch my other video for that. Um, today I'm gonna to tell you how to wire in a light or a deer motor into this so you get this result. I know it was you kids. So that's coming up. I'm gonna bring you guys forward and we're gonna start on the assembly of this. Before we go any farther, I got a lot of questions on what is a relay and how does it work, especially with the type that we're using. So I put together this really crude drawing and animation here to try and show you exactly how a relay works. We'll zoom into the relay here so we can go over all the parts that make it work. On the left, we have, the, of course, the red and black wires, which are the 5 volt positive and the ground that makes the relay actually work. This is what powers the relay. Okay, this has no effect on the other end of the relay where the wires to the motor or the lights go. Uh, the yellow line represents the signal coming in from the sound card. That's going to make the relay, you know, turn on or off. Over to the right of the relay, there's our common, normally closed, and normally open. When the relay is off, the common and the normally closed contacts are together. When a signal comes in from the sound card, that switch moves on over and it makes a connection between the common and the normally open, which that is what turns on, you know, your light or your motor. Now let's zoom out so we can see the whole thing. So here's the relay, the lamp, and the lamp plugged into an electrical outlet. As you can see, we've broken out one side of the electrical cord for the lamp and put one end to the common terminal and the other end to the normally open terminal. Now, as you can see, when the relay gets that signal from the sound card, the relay latches and the light comes on. That is a real simple explanation of how a relay works. For showing you how to hook up an AC motor and some AC lights and a high draw, a motor like a wiper motor uh, to a relay, we're gonna use basis on the last project we did in my last video, which was how a sound card could operate a simple relay. And this is the relay I used. You know, we had our five volts in, positive, five volts in, negative, and the sense wire over here that triggered the, the, uh, the relay. And of course, here's where you would put things where your load would go, like the two wires for a motor or LED. Uh, this is great for, like I said, light duty motors and lights. But today we're gonna to be using AC, which uh, the, the deer motors work off of. And we're also gonna be showing you how to do some uh, lighting, which is also AC. AC is radically different from DC. Usually in DC, us haunters were using voltages between five and 12 volts. You know, you short something out, you may, burn out your board, you may get a little few sparks and, and a few crackles. Uh, AC is radically different. Uh, just remember, boys and girls, AC is very dangerous. It can kill. It will kill. So before you do anything with AC, before you screw anything in or take anything out, uh, you want to make sure that the, everything is unplugged. So because we're using, a, using AC today, um, I decided that I wanted to show you a different type of relay that is absolutely functionally compatible to this, but it's a little beefier. And this is what we're gonna swap out when we, I show you how to wire up those motors. Uh, this is, let me turn it around this way so the ends are the same. These two relays are, like I said, absolutely 100% functionally compatible. Um, as far as the, what makes the relay work, here's your five volts here, positive, five volts negative. Again, over here, five volts positive, your ground. Uh, here is the terminal that makes the relay work when it gets a high or low signal. The same over here. 
These are absolutely compatible. Here's the jumper that makes the relay work when it receives a high signal or a low signal. Here's that same jumper over here. On the business end of the relay, let me turn this around so you can see. This is where you would connect your loads, like your, your lights or your motors. So here's the little one, one end of the wire will go here, which is called the common. And here's where the other wire will go for normally open. And over here is your normally closed terminal. They're absolutely the same three terminals over here. The only difference is the common load terminal is over here, where the normally open is here and the normally closed is here. Otherwise, these boards are absolutely 100% compatible. So I will put a link below on where you get this. And like I said, this is perfect. As you can see right here, I've got a spade terminal in this one. These heavy duty terminals right here, allow me to use these nice spade terminals that we can crimp on the end of the wires. So you get a real nice strong connection here, a real positive, it's not gonna slip out, it's not gonna fall out, it's not gonna short against something else. So that's why I wanna use this relay for our description today. And like I said, be a link below. This is our project from the last video. It was a real simple sound card hooked up to a relay and a speaker so that when you touched one of these pins here, one of seven, I'm sorry, one of eight different sounds would play. Get out of my graveyard or you become one of my friends. And as you can see the relay activated, you could see the red LED here. Get out of my graveyard or you become one of my friends. That means the relay is working. That means a connection is being made between these two load terminals here and turning on your light or your, your motor, whatever you had it hooked up to. Now, as I stated before, at the beginning of this video, we're going to be taking this relay out of, out of this circuit here and putting in this heavier duty one right here because we're going to be working with some AC. So that's the first thing we're going to do right now is let's swap out the relays. First thing, like I said, Always make sure all your circuits are dead. So you can see I got some power here going to the LED. You can tell by this light being on. I'm gonna pull the USB power out of this circuit. And there we go. So now we can take this relay out of it. Take out the power connectors, take out the trigger wire. And we will put this in in its place. said it's functionally compatible so we put this one in here the only difference is these screws are a flathead put in the ground put in the 5 volt positive so we now have it hooked up you got 5 volts positive here the ground and the trigger wire that goes back over to the sound card here so now we will plug everything back in again but you can tell the circuit or this whole project has power now because here's the power indicator right here on the L, on the uh, relay. And what I'll do is I'll pull the power out. You can see it go out. I'll plug it back in. It goes back on. So we know this now has power. And just to show you it's absolutely functionally compatible, we'll just hit another pin. I know it was you kids. And again. Forever haunt your dreams. Might be hard for you to see, but this LED right here is going on. I know it was you kids. So, like I said, relay is heavier duty, but absolutely functionally compatible. It took us two seconds to swap this out, and now we got these heavy duty terminals right here. So, what we'll do next is I'll show you how to wire in the deer motor. And of course, we start everything by removing power. So, here's the deer motor. Your motor may look a little bit different. This is actually a deer motor kit that I, uh, I picked up off of Amazon. Again, link will be below. So yours may actually be a true deer motor that was scavenged you know, from a deer prop. Mine came with the motor. It came with these leads coming out of the motor. Again, this is all AC. And it came with this AC outlet plug right here. You can plug into the wall. And I just used some uh, Wago style clips to, to get it all to work. And what we do is here's an electrical outlet. So I'm going to take this motor and I put a little piece of tape on here. Now when I plug this in, you'll start, start to see the tape turn around. Okay, so that's the deer motor. I think it's making one resolution every five or six seconds. 
So the trick is now to integrate this into that relay and sound card prop that, or a controller that we made in the last video. So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna bring it back, that prop we just saw. So basically what we wanna concentrate now is on these terminals right here. Like I said, this is the common terminal right over here. So here's how it's going to work. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So basically, you plug the deer motor in, travels through the black cord, okay, <laughs> up the blue wires. Imagine electricity flowing, and it makes the motor move, okay? So all we really wanna do is, one of these connections, okay, this is one side of the AC connector of electric. This is the other side. But basically, you wanna keep one of these attached, so one leg of electricity, you know, goes in a motor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break at the contact by taking this Wago clip out, and again, make sure unplugged AC kills. So now we had two leads. Now, if you have an actual true deer motor, you may not have these connected by Wago clips. Odds are you definitely won't have them. So what you need to do is just separate out the, uh, the, the two leads of the uh, cord that you have. And what you can do is you can just simply snip this cord in half and then use your fingernails or a knife and you just peel these apart. Then you can use a Wago clip, okay, to put one side back. And then what you'll do is you'll have two ends like this and you just strip them off. So you show a little bit of wire at the end, okay? And what we're gonna do is, like I said, I like to use terminal connectors. So I'm gonna get a couple terminal connectors here. You think I'd be prepared, wouldn't you? So we. We've exposed some metal here, metal. We've exposed some wire here. Now we just simply take one of our spade connectors here, slip it over top here, and we'll just crimp it down. And I'll put a link to where you can get all these tools online. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight, you can go to Walmart, you can get anywhere and get a pair of wire strippers and some crimpers and some terminal connectors like you see here. You're not gonna spend a lot of money and you're not gonna waste it because you're gonna use these for other props too. You know, you, you can use these for AC or DC connections. Okay, so now I have two crimped connectors, okay? And we're going to put one to the common load of the relay. Not to be confused with the common that's over here on this end, what powers the relay, you know, the five volt common. These two are not compatible. As a matter of fact, these are actually optically isolated, which means there's no electrical connection between these terminals and this terminal. A light actually makes this relay goes on. So that, that keeps you farther insulated from having any problems. So now we're gonna take this other one and what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach it to the normally open, which means the motor does not run unless it, the relay gets a signal. So that's it, that's all we did. Let's see if I can, that's it. So now we're gonna bring this motor back. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in the project. And you can see we have power. The red LED is, I guess it's kind of hard for you to see. Let me see if I can, the red LED came on on the relay. So that means this project now has power. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this again without the relay, without the steer motor being plugged in. And what we should see is we should see the relay light come on right here and we should hear some sound. So let's go do that. I'm gonna touch one of the pins. I will forever haunt your dreams. Okay, so you saw the relay. You may even have heard it click on, but the relay came on, we did that. Deer motor didn't come on because we still haven't plugged in the deer motor. So now what we're going to do is we are going to plug in the deer motor. So I'll give you a bit of a spoiler alert. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna to touch one of these pins, the relay is gonna come on and this motor is going to spin or my next video is going to be on fire safety. Here's the grounding pin. I'm gonna activate one of the pins. I know it was you kids. Let's get something that's a little longer. 
And as you saw, the motor started to spin. So now this prop, when activated by the sound card, will spin this AC motor. We're going to do the next thing. We're going to do it again now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the motor with a lamp. We're back. And now we have a lamp. No, this is not the lamp from the Pixar movie studio. Uh, this is just a simple $10 uh, lamp. I think we I picked up at um, Family Dollar. And as you can see, there's a, a just a 60 watt bulb in here. Okay, turns on and off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this relay, instead of it turning the deer motor, it's gonna turn this light on and off when it plays the sound. This is gonna be real great for your haunt when you wanna change the ambient lighting along with the sound. So what we have to do is I'm gonna show you exactly how you can take this normal cord that came with the lamp, how we're gonna break it apart so we can use it in this relay just like we did with the deer motor. And here we are back with the project again. There's nothing connected to the relay. I've taken the connectors for the deer motor away because now we're going to be using uh, the power cord for the lamp. And of course, before we do anything, it's AC, like I said before. Let's make sure that the plug is out, and it is. Now what we basically have to do is we have to take one side of this electrical cord here and we have to break the connection. And then those two ends will go in the terminal connector is just like the ear motor did. Now, we could always use a, well, <laughs> not prepared for class. We could always take a razor knife and try and separate these out. But then you're on the risk of digging into the cable that's next to it, exposing some wires. It, it, it's really just much easier if you simply take your wire cutters and cut the wire. Again, making sure that the plug is out. I can't say this enough. Plug out, plug out. Um, just cut. Okay, so now you've taken this power cord for the lamp and you've, you've cut it in half, obviously. Now, usually with most of these, uh, you've seen there's a, there's a separation between the two different cables. So you can take your nails and you just kind of separate them out and you can pull them apart. So you have some room to work with so you now we have you know two cables to work with we're going to do the same on the other end but if you couldn't exactly you know peel them apart with your your fingernails you could always just use your cutters there to start it a little bit and then once you've got them separated they'll pull right across or right apart rather okay so now we have the two ends so now what we have to do is we have to connect you kind of got to put this halfway together again so we have to get these, these two wires here on each end to join. And we're going to use our Wego style connectors right here to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to strip off some uh, wire here to expose an end. We're going to do the same on the other. You want to twist the strands together. Now, obviously, we're going to put some spade terminals on here like we did with the deer motor. So what I'm going to do is, while well, I've got them all exposed here and easy to work with, I'm going to take the other two ends and we're going to take them apart. Twist them up. Okay, so we're going to take one of our little Wago connectors here, Wago style connectors. I'm wondering why I'm saying Wago style because I'm not exactly sure these are Wago. Um, I got these off of Amazon. Like I said, I'll put the link below. Put them all the way up in here. Okay, so that's one. That's the one end of the cable, power cable. Here's the other end. So we're going to take one of the connectors from that end. You could also twist these together with some wire nuts. You could solder these together. You could twist them and put some electrical tape around them, which is not what I would advise, but you could do that. Like I said, I just like the Wago connectors because they're easy to use. 
didn't grab because I didn't have it all the way up there. There we go. So basically what we've done now is we've rejoined one side of that power cord. So now we have, like I said, now we've rejoined these two wires. Um, now we have these two ends. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our spade terminals. And we're just going to crimp them onto here using our wire crimpers. Now these are some pretty heavy duty wire crimpers. They're really nice. They give you good leverage, good strong connection. I'll put a link below on where you can get these. Uh, but you can, like I said, I think I got these off of Amazon where all of America shops. And you can get these also at Walmart, Kmart, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, where any of your big box stores or whatever. But like I said, uh, you can get little kits that have some terminal and spade connectors already in them along with the wire crimpers. But like I said, these have a nice long handle on them. So you get some good leverage, so you get a good pinch on them. And as you can see, a good pinch is real good because now these spade terminals are on here. Now, just like the deer motor, all we're going to do is put these spade connectors right into the relay. Okay, so now we're going to tighten them down. Okay, so now here's what we have. We have the power cord. One side of the power cord we reconnected using the Wago connectors. The other side, the, the other uh, side of the power cord is split and goes into these two terminals right here. Normally the common load and the normally open. So when the relay uh, activates, it will turn on our light. So what well, first thing we'll do is we will not plug the, we will not plug the lamp in yet. What was, let's just plug the project back in first. And as you can see, the light came on right here. It's hard for you to see, I know, for the, uh, for the relay. So now I'm going to activate the, the sound card, and you're going to see this light over here light up. Okay, so we know everything's working good there. So now what we're going to do, there you go. All right, so now we have the relay all hooked up. We have everything all wired up. We've tested to make sure that when we touch a pin, the sound plays and the relay activates. And now we have our lamp right here. The first thing we want to do is plug the lamp in. Now, spoiler alert, I'll tell you what's going to happen. We're going to touch the pin. You're going to hear sound play. Um, and it's going to activate the relay, which in turn should turn the lamp on. So, here we go. I know it was you kids. <laughs> Works a lot better when you turn the lamp on. Let's do it again. Get out of my graveyard. I need to become one of my friends. How cool is that? I, <laughs> and how many times I've done this and it still tickles me every time I do it. Um, this is such a great way to, like I said, to get, you know, some ambient light to come on, to highlight a prop along with the sound. Uh, and, you know, don't forget, you can always add an extra uh, mo a relay on here so you can have two relays, you know, one doing a motor and one doing a light. Uh, don't run a light and a motor off the same relay. That's, I, that's too much of a load. So, but you can easily add another relay in, um, in parallel with, you know, the five volts, uh, connectors and the sense pin. And like I said, it'll get two relays to work or better yet. And I'll put a link to this below. This is a better way to do it. It's, can you, can you tell Mrs. Maker set up my, uh, cave in here? I can't tell where things at. Where is, there we go. I'm going to go to the overhead real quick. This is a dual relay card. What happens here is it's got the same connectors. It's got, you know, a positive, a 5 volt positive, 5 volt negative. Um, and it's got a channel 1 and a channel 2 and uh, a common, which we don't use. But what you could do is you, what it does is this allows you to have two relays controlled by one card. And the way you do that, um, again, it's also got the jumper high and low. The way you do that is you can just simply put 
um, you know, the sense trigger pin into this one, like we do with the comment with the relay we have here, and then just run another wire right to the second one. So that way both the relays will operate off of the one signal and you've got two relays running two things. Like I said, one can be a light, one can be the motor. Put a link to that below. Just trying to find the drawer to put it back into. <laughs> I'm back. Um, so yeah, so like I said, you can get these relays uh, too. As a matter of fact, you can even get these in threes and fours. Like I said, I'll put a link down uh, below on this. Um, so, you know, you know, I know I'm probably boring you, but I got to do it again. I mean, that's really super cool. Um, I really hope this answered some of your questions on how to hook up, you know, AC motors and AC lights and some hydraul. Uh, motors to to this uh, like wiper motors wiper motors will work pretty much the same way you would just simply take the um, pow you know wiper motors work off of 12 volts so you would just wire the wiper motor to 12 volts you would break off one side of the connectors or the one side of the wires for the wiper motor and just put them to these terminals so you know you can have the 5 volts here that's running off the USB power back over here and then you can have the 12 volts for the, the wiper motor to work. Um, again, if you have any questions at all, just, you know, drop me a note below in the comments, send me an email, and I'll try to help you as much as I can. So I think that's about it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Hey, if it was helpful, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what we're doing, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see more of what we're doing and be notified of that, uh, be sure to hit the bell. Uh, and the reason I want you to do all those things is, well, one, for you two algorithms. But more importantly, this is just one in a series of things we'll be doing. Uh, this whole, the, the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding an Arduino to this. So as you know, this card can play up to eight different sound files. We're going to put an Arduino in here with a motion sensor. So it's going to sense somebody walking, and then it's going to pick one of those eight songs to play, and it's going to activate a relay. And, everything's, and also one of the things we're going to be doing with sound and motion is we're going to be taking this sinister doll that I got right here uh, at the end of season last year from Spirit Halloween. And it's a static prop, and we're going to add some motion to this. We're going to add a servo to the head. We're going to add some lights in there, and we're going to add some sound. So that's all coming up. Don't forget, it's less than six months to the beginning of October for the Halloween season, and we have a lot of things to cover, which brings me up another thing. Um... I, you know, I try to find projects that you know, I think you guys would like, but I really don't know what you guys need to know how to do. So if there's something you don't know how to do and you're curious about, send me a lot, you know, send me an email, you know, um, if I know how to do it, I'll work it into the, into the channel and I'll make a project and I'll teach you uh, people how to do it. I'm always looking for new ideas and it's, it's channels here for you. So, you know, throw those ideas out. So until next time, I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave.